for one or two shots. You guys are a big group. There's a lot of Kate's, Katie's, Kate's, but it works, and we'll figure it all out. I think they're gonna have some chairs, but let's start in the meantime, and we'll just get this going. Um, the, you, now, all of you guys were part of like a, an improv comedy troupe, right? Can you talk to me a little bit about the origins of you all coming together? Sure. Uh, so I actually put the group together, um, and it started because we were all in classes together and just getting to know each other through the comedy community in Chicago. And I just thought it was really bizarre that I knew all these really funny women named Kate or Katie. <laughs> so I put the group together just sending out Facebook messages more as a joke. Just like, oh, we all have the same name. That's so funny. Um, and then we started doing shows, and uh, we figured out that we have great chemistry, and we're all really different performers. Uh, but we bring different strengths, uh, and here we are seven years later. I love that. Um, in terms of the show itself, do you want to sort of, I'll just, I don't know who wants to discuss it. We'll talk about the idea of teachers. I mean, at what point did you say, let's do a show about the world's, I mean, I don't want to say worst teachers, because there have been terrible teachers on television, but I mean, they're not great, let's be real. Um, where did the idea for this show come from originally? Well, the idea we, um were the group that Katie did, and um, we had we had done a pilot or had written uh, a pilot previously, but we had nothing had gone with it. And um, a friend of ours, who's a casting director and director in Chicago, met with us and said he wanted to do something with us. And basically, he threw out the idea of teachers based on that we all look like we could be teachers, <laughs> and we don't look like necessarily we're funny. <laughs> but um, and also he had kind of the same idea. We had a conversation with him about how. You know, teachers are held on this high pedestal, yeah. but you're still people. And when you're in your, you know, early to mid twenties, you make a lot of mistakes at your job. But when you make a mistake as a teacher, you know, it has an impact. So uh, Matt Miller came up with the original just concept, but then together we each developed our own characters and wrote the web series together. I love that. I mean, let's talk about that process of sort of building out these characters. I mean, what was important? Obviously, you want them to have common traits and things that would you'd get why they would be friends. But I mean, what was important to you guys in sort of figuring out each individual identity? Well, when we started writing the characters, we decided to approach it from um, the idea of taking something really small or maybe big about ourselves and heightening it mm -hmm. a ton. Uh, so we all kind of picked that one thing about ourselves and heightened it and heightened it and heightened it for the web series. Um, and so we each took a little bit of ourselves. <laughs> um, so you, you all know a little bit more about us <laughs> as people now. Um, uh, and then when it came down to taking it from the web series to TV, we realized we had to kind of heighten them even more because they were all a little too similar. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they weren't, they were different, but they felt like six women that were a little bit too much alike. So we, we heightened them even more. So if you see our web series, you'll see that these characters have changed a lot. Like my eyeliner got <laughs> a lot thicker. <laughs> I, love, I mean, can you talk a little bit more about sort of the fun in adapting a web series for television? I mean, you get to expand, you get to really play kind of in a different ballpark. Sure. Yeah. I, Wait, you, it there was, are also wireless microphones, oh, which I so saw across yeah. the room, but continue. <laughs> well, we love passing it back and forth. Um, yeah, it was really fun to kind of explore who these people were for a longer period than two yeah. minutes. Um, and it was great to kind of really explore like their relationships with each other and you know on the web we really made it a point to have our content be really really short because as consumers we knew that nobody's gonna watch something that's longer than a minute or a minute and 30 seconds and so when we were able to translate it to TV we could really explore the personal relationships between the teachers more and the world like the classrooms yeah. and how they interacted with their students and other you know, characters like Hot Dad or the principal. So that was really a cool um, thing that we learned going to TV that we could explore that more. It's also a great time because there's, everyone always says that there's not enough people telling women's stories on television, on film, and the people who really are are self-starters like you guys and doing it for yourselves. I mean, in having that ability and having that option, uh, what was important to you from producing standpoints and from creative standpoints to have come through with the show? whoever wants to take it. Um, well, I think uh, we really wanted to be able to tell our stories and our characters and um, things that our girlfriends have told us about their experiences. Caitlin Barlow at the end here actually was a Chicago public school teacher for a few oh, years, so okay. give her a hand because that's hard. Um, 
But uh, so when, when it came down to it, um, TV Land came to us to uh, look at a pilot. And at first, you know, TV Land in our minds was, you know, they do throwback stuff. They're, they're classic sitcoms. Um, and the shows that they had that are newer content that they're developing were, were multi-cam and like just not in our style. So if you've ever watched a TV Land show, it's probably a lot different than <laughs> what you saw. So I think at first we thought, oh no, are they going to try to re rein us in? Are they going to try to clean it up? Is it going to be multi-cam? Are we going to have a studio audience? And TV Land is going under uh, like an amazing kind of renaissance, this new wave of newer, younger programming. And they gave us so much freedom, it was unbelievable. I mean, we even found ourselves kind of reining it in a bit as we were writing the pilot, and they were going, no, 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 like, we want your voice, we want your vibe, like, get gross, do what you gotta do, and we were like, for real? And so, I mean, really, they, they really supported our voice, so it, it was kind of this magic pairing that happened right away. We feel very lucky about that. I was gonna say, guys, for you, I mean, as producers, you must know how rare it is to have a network basically be like, here's the money, do whatever you think is hilarious. I mean, how great is that as an opportunity for you? Uh, yeah, it's what you hope they're going to let you do, and that's what they should all do. If you read books about the breakthrough comedies, it's always these guys wrote for the stage and had never written before. You got Seinfeld, didn't know anything about what he's supposed to do, so he does a unique show. So I think that they're always doing the right thing for a show when they let people have their their um, free reign. And I think we've been very lucky. Uh, uh, the past two shows we've done, Key and Peel and this show, we've had uh, producers of the network that have basically just given helpful notes to shape in the direction you're going and not notes to shape it in some different direction they're thinking of. The, um, the, the, the old adage is to never work with animals or children. And I feel like, I mean, clearly you guys have a goat in the first episode. Um, there's also a lot of children. I mean, what has that been like? Sort of, they're not super incorporated into the things that would make their parents be like, maybe you don't want to do this show. Um, but was that sort of like that where the line had to be drawn there? Or in future episodes, it, it's will children nightmare. need therapy? It's a total nightmare. <laughs> really? Um. We've talked that we, we're, 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 we, ha we all have trepidations about contributing to the, the children entertainment industrial multi, you know, industrial complex, you know, that, that um, and when you get a good kid, it's so exciting, you know, a kid who's actually like a, hum you know, acts like a human being and not like a trained animal. Um, <laughs> but it's really hard, it's definitely the hardest part about producing this series. Were you like, maybe one day they'll just become teachers at a junior college and it'll just make our lives as human beings so much easier? I mean, probably not, because there's like just something magical and exciting about elementary school that you don't find in like the dark hole that is middle school and high school, <laughs> which uh, wouldn't have been as fun to play with, I think, for us, other than these, these like... K through sixth yeah. graders. Yeah, and I was gonna say too, on top of that, it's uh, the dichotomy is between what we're saying and the, the people who are actually hearing it every day. So when we say inappropriate things or maybe too honest about the way your life might turn out in front of children, it's uh, funnier. Absolutely. I mean, the kids bring such an amazing level of comedy. I'm thinking of like the drawings where he's, you know, maybe not being as kind to what the teacher would like her body to look like in a photo. <laughs> Uh, when you look ahead at sort of what you guys have coming, what excites you about the stories you're going to get to tell through this show? I think what excites us most is the show really took on a shape that I don't think we were expecting as we went on. And the web series started as this very grounded, um, you know, real people. And as we started writing, the characters became very heightened and fun. And all of a sudden, we were doing stunts um, in episodes <laughs> six and seven. And so I think what we're really excited is to see kind of how this first um, season's world looks to an audience and how they react to it and then kind of seeing where we can even take it further because we took it pretty far. <laughs> For example, there's an episode where uh, Feldman, Kate Friedman's character, spends the episode crawling around the air ducts of the school uh, after a child who's, who's hidden up there. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Which is based on a real life experience that Ian Roberts uh, had <laughs> substitute teaching in Chicago. Yeah, I was a, a terrible substitute teacher that used to read a newspaper at the front of the class. <laughs> and at one point I noticed a bunch of kids looking up in the ceiling and I 
in my bad teacher way, just yelled at them and said, hey, get back your seats, what are you doing? Leroy is up in the ceiling. And I go up and I ask the kid to come down and he just tells me no. And I realize that I have no recourse because I can't tell the administration I was paying so little attention that a kid ended up in the ceiling and she basically finds herself in the same situation. I'm glad you're producing television now. Um, but I mean, how many of these stories, I mean, you have teaching experience, you, how many of these stories are cobbled together from like horrifying things that are getting thrown around the teacher's room, te lounge? Oh, well, quite a bit. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I was a teacher for several years and you know, it's, a, it's the hardest, one of the hardest jobs in the world. It's so hard, there's so much pressure on you. But at the same time, you are a young person or whatever, getting your life, or not so young, and your life is still a mess, getting it together. And so, you know, there were so many moments where I'd be on the, uh, outside doing playground duty, and I'd be talking to my, um, you know, my coworker about a date she went on the night before, and like, it would be very graphic, and there were children just playing <laughs> in front of us, like, oh my God. But, um, you know, or uh, just uh, kids. You know, I, I have a saying, am I allowed to say curse words, or? Fuck yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I, you know, from teaching for so many years, like, I, I kind of came to this uh, understanding about how I felt about the world, and um, there's asshole adults, and there's asshole kids. Like, <laughs> some kids are just assholes, and <laughs> they're probably going to be asshole adults. And so it's sort of like <laughs> the struggle to, like, obviously you want to nurture this child. You, you will. You'll give this child everything you have, but at the same time, there's a part of you that's like, shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> and so... <laughs> So it's just kind of that um, internal struggle that a lot of teachers have, and a lot of things about their job that are very challenging, that you have to have a sense of humor about to get through the day. Oh, and a lot of our um, stories just come from personal experience. Even if you haven't been a teacher, a lot of it can just be, you know, we might have all done a walk of shame to work, um, but when you do that and show up to school in front of children, it suddenly becomes so much more inappropriate. Um, so a lot of it's just like po pulled from our personal lives of what it, what it was like to be a mess. <laughs> We're all perfect now. <laughs> um, I would love to open it up to audience questions. If there's any uh, questions you guys have, just raise your hand if you would like to ask the panel. Then I will continue. Um, when we talk about the idea of teachers and you talk about fitting the show into like an existing network model, I think it's a very interesting time in television right now where you have so many different platforms. And I'm curious, I mean, maybe this is something uh, you can only answer for your own personal experience, but I mean, does it matter anymore where your material lives? I mean, you have a web series that was turned into a television show. It kind of feels like the Wild West a little bit mm -hmm. in the television landscape now. And how have you guys found that? Well, I think with the internet, it makes it so immediate. I mean, you have YouTube and Funny or Die, and the bottom line is if you have an idea, you can truly put it on right away. And so that creates something where you can have your voice heard by everyone and you can get a following and, and something like that can snowball from there. Yeah, and to piggyback off that, you know, I, I don't think it is, you know, I feel like consuming television has changed a lot, especially with Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and these are platforms that are putting out their own series now and so I, I don't really feel like there's that like network mindset anymore. I think people just watch what they like and it doesn't matter where it's coming from. And you can have access to it so many different ways. Online, you can DVR it. You know, We don't need to tune in at 8 p.m. on Tuesday to catch what we're watching anymore. And so I think that's a, it's a really cool time in television because I feel like everything's sort of bleeding together and just good stuff is coming to the top no matter where it's coming from. Absolutely. I mean, I think you guys with Key and Peele probably saw that a lot as well. I mean, that was a show that really thrived in an internet culture where the clips would go viral and people would be talking about them the next day. I mean, that has to be, as a com comic sort of producer, the best case scenario. Yeah, I was gonna say that um, I, I don't think Key and Peele would have um, gotten the recognition that it's gotten if it hadn't been for the internet and the fact that sketches are very easy to put, you know, to watch on the internet. And then, and I think ultimately all shows are going to live and die by the internet, even if they're on television. And I think it's interesting that the journey of this show, starting as a web series going and going to TV, but ultimately what's, I think, going to decide its fate and the fate of all cable comedy shows is how many people watch it online, mm -hmm. you know. 
<laughs> so. I, I mean, have, I'm curious because this strikes me also as a show, given its origins, where you could do web content specifically. You could be like, this scene doesn't work in the show, so let's just throw it online. I mean, what kind of conversations have you had about engaging that online audience? Um, we had a really wonderful social media expert join us for the entire duration of our two-month shoot, uh, Blake Wexler, who we actually got introduced to um, by Ian and Jay, because he did Key and Peel as well. Um, and throughout the entire shoot, we, if we came up with a little idea on set, um, we would shoot it, a little 30 minute, one minute video that we are planning to release online um, to promote the show when it premieres in January and a little bit before that. Um, we had a lot of fun with that, like any crazy stupid idea that was way too bad shit to put in the show, we could make into a social media video. Um, one of the best examples of it was uh, Katie Colleton, who plays Miss Snap, um, <laughs> had a scene uh, with a wonderful this, uh, a unicorn child actress who was very talented <laughs> and very kind. Um, and they shot a hilarious like little video where this like eight-year-old girl was schooling Colleton on how to be an actress in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> so we kind of planned to like keep our like sketch comedy alive in. Um, putting out those little videos. Yeah, that was way too close to reality, too. <laughs> <laughs> they have an incredible resume. Yeah, she has an incredible resume. I actually did three of those, because three child actors I worked with had amazing resumes. So I just kept doing a video where they, they would, were like disgusted with me, saying like it was wonderful to work with an unknown. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, um, they're like, they we can do an inside the actor's studio moment now. I'll be James Lipton, you be you. We, we have come up with a, a, a lovely little uh, term for ourselves, which is uh, we're six homely bitches with no credits. Um, <laughs> so it was fun to see the kids' uh, reaction to these no names. I love I actually heard on the pilot shoot, we were walking to, uh, to grab lunch, and I saw the par a group of parents walking back to gather their kids to get for lunch. And uh, I heard a parent just go, I don't know who any of these women are. <laughs> <laughs> good thing we have a good sense of humor. <laughs> I revel in that stuff. What is that relationship like? You know, it's one thing to have child actors and parents of child actors there to, but I mean, you're also doing things with and in front of the children that are sort of atypical perhaps for their experience. I mean, that has to be though a funny, people kind of the best. Don't you just kind of want to mess with them even a little bit more? <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you one of the things that the concert thing was dropping the F-bomb just, oh, okay. and, and like the loudest you ever had. <laughs> like like say it would, the, the situation would come for someone to say, hey, how, how loud can you say fuck? Like that, that's almost what it seemed like, you know, because you, when you'd have 20 kids in front of you, oh, I can say it real loud, fuck! <laughs> oh boy, you know, so that was one of the... <laughs> The, the nightmares of shoot. I can't tell how many times I just went, and I just, the second after I did it, oh boy, I just cursed in front of all those kids. I had, I had a, um, a kid's mom come up to me afterwards and just go, she heard you say the F word, and it wasn't in the script. <laughs> and I go, I'm so sorry, that's how I talk. <laughs> I mean, but at the end of the day, they're the ones bringing their children there. They auditioned it's for their the fault. film. I mean, for the part. Yeah, it's all the parents' fault. You guys are not I to blame mean, at all. Based on some of the parents we met, and most of them were very lovely, but there's a special type of person who pushes their kid out. And when the kids want to do it, it's amazing. But with, it's very clear that some of them don't. <laughs> really? and, and that's when you're like, oh, no. Why are you doing Your kid just wants to play baseball with his friends. <laughs> but I had to talk one woman out of trying to make her kid cry for me for about three minutes because it was a still shot. And I just said, if he makes a face, it'll look like he's sad. I can get him to cry. You sure you don't want me to get him to cry? No, I really don't want you to get him to cry. And so... I feel like she wanted him to cry. Well, okay, the, the way that, I'm hesitant because then this woman will know it's her kid, but the way, the way she could do it is she would show him a picture of his dog who died. Yeah, I, think, oh I, I think them hearing us drop an F-bomb is the least of their concerns. Yeah. <laughs> this kid was an amazing actor, by the way, because uh, I remember with the director, we said, hey, could you... This makes you a little sad when you hear this. And the kid just went, and he got tears. And I'm like, I've been acting for 20 years. I can't get tears that 
quickly. In fact, I don't know if I can get them at all. And, and this kid just like instantly can access this. I'm like, wow, you're a real actor. <laughs> oh my God. Obviously, um, as everybody saw in the pilot, Alison Brie is an executive producer. She's in the episode. I mean, she also had come from a world very similar with Community. I mean, that was a show that really took off because of a passionate online fan base. I mean, in conversations with her just about approaching a television show in that way, what did you guys take away as sort of helpful pieces of advice? Um, yeah, Allison has been such a wonderful partner um, with us for teachers. She's been an unbelievable source and very, very supportive. Um, and, you know, I feel like the best advice she gave us, which was very true, is she said that, you know, community just stuck to who it was. Mm -hmm. And it has a very specific tone and a very specific voice. And as long as you stay true to what you think is funny and what you enjoy as comedians developing, an audience will find it and stay loyal to you. Yeah. And so um, even in the writer's room, we really tried to stick true to that. Like there was a couple of things where we would pitch and we would be like, well, I don't know if everybody would get that. And then I think one of the two of you said Jordan. Um, uh, Jordan Peele, we would uh, have this all the time because it would be some reference to 90s kid shows. And Jay and I, of course, would have no idea what the hell he was talking about. And it was fair to say if we didn't, a huge amount of people weren't going to, it was a very niche thing. And he goes, look, some people won't get it, but the people that do will be our fans forever. You know, and, and, and then he pointed to Monty Python. He said, I remember tons of stuff I didn't get, but I just assumed, well, they're hipper than me. And it actually interested me. Yeah. And by the way, both Ian and I found out what a diva cup was from working on the pilot. Yeah, one of our favorites. I, uh, I can say that their scripts constantly sent me to Wikipedia. Yeah. And was like, I was looking up um, LBG. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Endless. DSLs. DSLs. <laughs> oh, no, I was talking about that thing about the oh, lesbian, LGBT, gay, transgender, Q. questioning. Did yeah. it, I mean, on and on. It was just all, so many uh, women's issues and then youth issues <laughs> that uh, they flummoxed me. We, we like just going, I can't wait to hear what they you know, how, what they found out, how they found out, which. I, I remember Jay and I joking one time and getting in the like, corner and cowering because it was this description that was all down here. And it was just like, this is it's just so used to, you know, just never are men the minority in the room. We were the only two men and we even had one extra writer and it was all, I don't know what it was, so, something that was period related. I think, I think it might have been the uh, discussion about queefing. That was, oh, yeah. Yeah. Queefing and uh, a really specific phenomenon, the front fart, different than a queef. <laughs> which is apparently you fart in a seat and you feel the fart come up through here because there's no balls to hold it in. Right, ladies? Right, ladies? We've had front farts. But, yeah, so th it was an education. Haven't we done well with this? That's right. Well, I feel like we've all learned something here today. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I feel like I have to end on that note because it doesn't get better you than can't, that. You can't top that. I, I mean, I feel like that... Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for creating this hilarious show. Thank you all for coming. Don't forget, Teachers premieres next year on TV Land.